Hey everybody, Brandy here doing my comments for my Stampin' Studio today. I'm so excited you could join me. Today we're going to be making shaker cards. In particular, we're going to be using products from trinitystamps.com. Trinity Stamps asked me to participate in this video hop, which is going to result in a giveaway for someone just like you. This hop is internationally open and it's going to be open for one week. Stick around to the end of the video and I will share with you how you can enter the giveaway from trinitystamps.com. Let's get started. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to blend our uh, card front with some distressed oxides. And the colors that I'm going to be using today is wilted violet, picked raspberry, and spun sugar. I'm going to be doing an ombre effect. And I'm going to be using my makeup brushes here that I got from Amazon. And I think they do a really good job of blending. I'm gonna post the link down below so you can check that out for yourself. Um, I'm going to fast forward through this part of the video um, because I want to really focus in on the products that I use to create the shaker part of this card. However, if you're interested in a more in-depth look at how I did the blending, I will post a link to that video down below. So let's get started on the exciting part and check out some of these really cool products from trinitystamps.com. Next, we're going to be using this new stencil from Trinity Stamps, and it is called catching some rays. It's a layered stamp, so you use both um, stencils to kind of create a different layered effect to it, and I'm going to be using it to create some like sun rays. So I'm going to be using the dark upper part of the card as my sun horizon, and then I'm going to position the card so that the pink Part, the pick raspberry part is going to be where the sun rays are coming down. So I'm going to turn the stencil over, turn my card on top, and now I'm going to place some purple tape just to hold the card in place so it doesn't move when I stencil over it. Now comes the fun part. I'm going to be stenciling um, the top part of the card with the wilted violet. And I'm going to be careful not to get that wilted violet to bleed too much into the picked raspberry part of the card. Just going to be using my blending brushes again and just adding some of that wilted violet color on top uh, with the big sun rays that are coming out. Next, I'm going to use my picked raspberry color and I'm just going to um, put some of that rays in that lower part of the card. I'm gonna be a little bit more heavy towards the, the midline or where the horizon is. And then as I get down into the bottom part of the card, I'm gonna ease up on the pressure because I don't want as much of that color in there and I want it just to sort of fade. Next, I'm going to be using the smaller rays, and I'm basically just going to put that circle in the same spot where the um, previous stencil was, and just sort of offsetting the layering, and just so I can get kind of a, a, an extra uh, layer of rays there. And as you can see, that layering stencil effect really does create a dynamic blending there, and I really love it. So next we're going to use some Perfect Pearls to give the card a little bit of shimmer. Open the container and then use a paintbrush to dip into the powder. And then take your spritzer bottle, just like I've got here, and just basically um, dump the paintbrush in there and kind of give it a nice swirl. And you can always pick up the excess if any of have fallen off and just pick that up with your brush and then um, add that to the water bottle. Give it a good shake. Make sure you've got all of those per perfect pearls all mixed in with the water. And this is just a uh, water spritzer um, bottle that I got from scrapbook.com. Next, you're going to spritz the paper. And you don't have to put a lot of um, water on the paper. And I like to hold the spritzer bottle um, far enough, maybe about a foot away, so you don't totally oversaturate the paper. But what happens is that the distressed oxide ink reacts with that paper. And it kind of gives it kind of a, I don't know, like a bokeh effect. Um, but you will notice that the card does curl up a little bit. So I've got a solution for that. I let the card dry for a bit. 
and then once it's dry I'm gonna run it through my laminator you just put a piece of typing paper folded in half put your card in there and then run it through the laminator nice and hot it'll come out on the other end nice and straight and flat I love this little um, pro tip on how to get your cards um, flat after you've adhered water to it this also works with watercolor paper now that the card has been um, inked up and blended and uh, we've got those sun rays on there we wear it through the laminator now it's time to uh, start working on the shaker part of the card I'm going to be using a die from Trinity Stamps. This is one of their standalone die sets and it is called the Slimline Card Series Frame and Fold Die Set. There are lots of different elements to this die set and you're going to be seeing a lot of that in the card to come. But the particular heart that I am using comes from that die set. These are the My Favorite Thing Stitch Rectangle Stack Set Dynamics. So I'm just going to place my dies down on the card and I'm putting some purple um, low tack adhesive tape on there to keep those dies in place. going to run it through the Big Shot and now you're going to see where I have got that heart there and I'm trying to figure out where to put the heart down so that's going to be on the back of the shaker. So I'm just going to position my paper there even on both sides make sure I've got it all centered and then I'm going to pull that heart out put some of the lawn fawn glue down on the back of that heart I'm going to pick it up with some tweezers and then just place it down holding the uh, big part of the card down in place and then just kind of insetting that die in the middle there and I'm just gonna lift up that other part and now I've got the heart positioned exactly where I want it on my card front Next, we need to lay down a piece of acetate paper over the cutout, and I'm just going to be using some of the Lawn Fawn liquid glue here, just placing a little bit on there. And I want to tell you that it's better if you don't do it right up against the edge, because once you place that acetate sheet down, you may get some um, glue that kind of smooshes over into the front, and we don't want any of that glue to show. The next part of our card is where the magic happens. We are going to place foam on the back of that card front and we want to um, raise that card front up and so what I'm using here is scrapbook.com's exclusive double-sided foam adhesive. This particular width that I'm using is the quarter inch and they've got an inch and I think a two inch um, variety as well but I like this right here so I'm just going to take two pieces of the foam and adhere it to each other and sometimes it can be a little bit tricky just to get it on straight but this is kind of an important part of the card making process so you want to be really careful and if you kind of bunch it up and you don't get it on straight just pull it out a little bit and then restart reapplying now the next part is probably the most important part of this process and that is that you want to remove the foam or the tape the backing tape to both sides of the foam adhesive um, that way it makes it a little bit more malleable and you're going to uh, place that down and what I really love about this scrapbook.com's double-sided foam adhesive tape is that it is very pliable and so I am just making an outline around that opening I'm doing it probably about an eighth of an inch back receding back and that way um, you're not going to see the foam uh, through the window. So you want to offset it just a little bit, maybe um, 16 inches, six, 1 16th of an inch or an eighth. Then I'm just going to uh, put the double-sided foam adhesive basically on the rest of the card. Now that we have the card front um, kind of bumped up with the double-sided foam adhesive, it is time to add our bling. Now I'm using some of the Blackberry Bliss Jelly Drop Hearts Embellishment Mix from Trinity Stamps. I love how this matches the colors that I have uh, colored onto the card front and the heart theme really does go well. So what I like to do is to place the embellishments right on the on the bottom part of the card, 
and then place the card front on top of it. I think it makes it easier for me to line up the paper. And looky there, we've got a shaker card. Now it's time to die cut our sentiment. I'm going to be using a die that comes in the same die set that I used previously with that heart. And it is the Slimline Card Series Frame and Fold Die Set from Trinity Stamps. I used the Hero Arts Black cardstock and die cutted the word three times and then glued them together with some Lawn Thon glue and just to give it some dimension. And then I die cutted the outline or the halo with vellum from Hero Arts as well. Next, we're going to emboss the sentiment. Um, I am going to be using the Love and Stuff Sentiment Photopolymer set from uh, Trinity Stamps. And the words that I want are you and sweetheart. So I'm going to use two of these stamps. And again, we're going to be using some of that Hero Arts Pitch Black cardstock. I've got my Misty out here. I'm going to be using Versamark ink to ink up my stamps. And then I'm going to be embossing it with some Nouveau embossing powder. And the color that I'm going to be using is Ballerina Pink. And it's going to stand out quite nice against that black cardstock from Hero Arts. I don't need the entire stamp image there where it says you are my favorite. So I'm going to be trimming it down to just saying you. And then I'm going to also just trim out uh, with my scissors um, the words sweetheart. So the card's going to say love you sweetheart. For the card base I'm going to use a Hero Arts Peony cardstock. It's a pretty thick cardstock and it does well for card bases. The glue that I'm using to adhere the card front down to the card base is Tombow's Fast Fuse. Actually it's Tombow Extreme. Um, I say Fast Fuse because it used to be a Stampin' Up! product and you'll see that it's the Stampin' Up! container that I've got there. But Stampin' Up! no longer sells it so I actually purchased my refills from Amazon and I'll put a link down below if you're interested in that. But the Fast Fuse aka Extreme um, Tape Runner is a very strong adhesive and I find that when you've got a lot of layering or you've got some heavy stuff um, heavy weight to your card, you want to make sure that you got it down solid. All right, so now we're just going to position the sentiments where I want them, and I like that position. I've decided not to um, add any dimension to the sentiment itself. The card is already bumped up, and I really didn't want to bump it up any further fearing that it may not fit in an envelope. So I'm just going to glue that down flat as it is. And I've um, kind of positioned the words a little bit cockeyed. And that is on purpose for interest. Again, using that long fawn glue tube to um, place it down. I've got my little reverse tweezers there to help me with the smaller um, pieces there. Just going to glue that down. And then I am going to be moving on to the next phase. And finally, we are going to be blinging up this card with some Silverstone Metallic Rhinestone Mix from TrinityStamps.com. They have tons of embellishments like this that go perfectly to embellish your card. I'm just going to use the jewel picker there and use my lawn flan glue to glue those down and then we have got a beautiful card as a result. And that is it. I absolutely love this card and I love the way it came out. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video and I do hope that it has inspired you to create your own shaker card. Trinity Stamps has tons of embellishments and tons of things to make your own little shaker card. And so I hope this video has inspired you to go out and try it on your own. Please check out the description box down below. It'll tell you how you can enter into the giveaway from trinitystamps.com. And if you're interested in some freebies, I do want to encourage you to visit out my free resource library. And that's at www.stampmesomelove.com forward slash library. I keep all of my PDFs for my tutorials, all of my free patterns, my SVG files, all in that resource library, and it's all free for you. I'll post the link down below in the description box, so be sure to check that out as well. I hope you found this video helpful, 
And if you wouldn't mind, give me a big thumbs up if you did like it. And also, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and hit that bell. That way you get notified every time I upload a new video. Life happens, I comment, stamp me some love. Take care and I'll see you in the next video.